I spent most of my musical life on a planet where there are 12 pitch classes, a circle of fifths and 12 keys. But as they say, you don't really understand your own planet unless you've studied others. This is a map of some of the more accessible alternative musical worlds. It was produced by Paul Ehrlich in 2004, and with a bit of computer assistance, I'm going to recreate the map and take a look at what lies beyond its edges. OK, the problem this chart addresses is a very old one, how to get a nice sounding set of intervals for music making without using a ridiculous number of different pitches. This has always been a challenge for people building and tuning fixed pitch instruments such as organs and pianos. Now, 12 notes per octave works pretty well, and we've built that into our Western musical mythology with a thing called the circle of fifths. This depends on a deliberate tweaking of intervals that's known as temperament. OK, I'm going to hide this um, original drawing, and now you can see the computer version. Just to give you an idea of the layout, the centre point represents just intonation with intervals derived from the harmonic series. And all these, all these dots and lines around it represent attempts to get close to just intonation with a finite set of pitches that you could play on some imaginable keyboard. The contours represent how far away from just intonation you are with any particular tuning. And um, down in the five o'clock direction, that's where basically the um, third and fifth harmonics are quite compressed and possibly the octave stretched. And up in the one o'clock direction, it's the um, third harmonic uh, that gives us the perfect fifth uh, together with the octave. It's, it's that one which is getting stretched, perhaps. And over this way, it's the fifth harmonic, which gives us, again, with the octave, a uh, major third. So if we look at this one, the, the point which we well know as um, 12 tone equal temperament, it's kind of over in this westerly direction which tells you right off that the fifth harmonic is tuned a bit high. Now having said that you can tell this is actually a pretty good ratio because you won't find any other numbers so low at this radius from the center um, and it, it kind of looks important. It, it, um, it clears a space around itself and it's also got lots of paths leading up to it, these, these other temperaments. So these pink lines, each of those represents a temperament, which is not quite the same thing as a tuning. Um, it's actually a whole family of mathematically related tunings. And um, as you can see, important tunings like 12, 19, 28 belong to several families. I'm going to go in a bit closer to the, the central area now, which is very crowded. So we'll zoom a bit that way. I'm going to lose the contours because you get a nicer zoom that way. OK. Now the central area is coming into view. And I'll stop in a moment. Here we are. Now the, there's a tiny little red dot here, which is actually the just intonation point. Um, actually, I'll have the contours back. And something I'm going to do now also is I'll put back the original drawing. So looking right in the center, there's the little red star, which is or sort of hexagon, which is Paul Ehrlich's original symbol for the just intonation point, and I've got a little red dot inside it, which is um, the computer symbol for it. There are a couple of lines here, which are not on the original drawing. They're actually temperaments from Paul's table one, which he didn't put on the drawing, because um, though they're insanely accurate in terms of going right past very close to just intonation, um, they are so-called rather complex t temperaments, um, they only achieve that. I mean, Luna, for example, only, well, actually, both of them, if you, if you look at this point they go through, um, that's one of the lowest um, divisions in this area of the octave, but it's, it's 118 steps per octave. So those are little intervals, scale steps of 
one tenth of a semitone basically and it's actually not hard to get very close to just intonation with such small scale steps so interesting as these are they're not a great achievement in terms of economy um, of temperament um, but if you look at something like uh, Helmholtz for example across here uh, now that also goes very close really uh, and that is a more economical uh, temperament in terms of the number of pitches it needs and if you look here it goes through this rather nice and well-known point where the octave is divided into 53 steps which is just about keyboardable there was a famous 19th century keyboard based on that I'm going to vanish the uh, original drawing again and we're back with this um, I'm going to mention that on each temperament line there's one of these little blue dots and I'm showing the exact tunings at that dot as well that was for Orson this is the, the, the comparable thing for, for Compton these are what Paul called the top or tenny optimal tunings of the temperaments and that's arguably the most consonant version of the temperament they concentrated these dots on three alignments basically the horizontal and the two lines at 60 degrees there are a few exceptional ones which are on the vertical or 60 degrees to that and um, Compton's an example of that the contours we've got here you can see we're really close in now that's that's one fifth of a cent per octave mistuning um, that's how much we're bending the pitches of the fundamental intervals the uh, the prime intervals um, so that's that's really inaudible stuff yeah we're going to put back the original drawing and have a little zoom out let's watch how this goes and you can see some of some of Paul's contours very faint hexagonal lines but they're at intervals of or a spacing of one cent per octave in terms of how much damage is done to the intervals and the last one shown is actually 10 cents per octave so beyond that you're getting into things which are actually uh, kind of not really very musical uh, here we've got the um, original diagram of ladies and gentlemen we're floating in space we've got uh, <laughs> some interesting stuff happening around us um, what you can see is um, for example here's something one called father a temperament which simply grazes it's on the table it's it's a very rough and ready temperament it's not accurate at all but it was included as an example of of one which just sort of falls outside the criteria that way um, so I put it on the drawing here it hardly comes on to the original drawing here um, just a few points on it it's not mentioned and uh, this one which is bug also kind of scrapes past on the outside of those contours so it doesn't meet the criteria and those two along with this one dicot form a, a big triangle which is really the the boundary of what's musically reasonable um, beyond this they're really very distorted um, tunings and dicot just dodges through the contours here uh, within the acceptable limits and so that makes it onto Paul's table one um, okay let's carry on outwards that big triangles coming into view now and you can see a few more points where lines which haven't met before are meeting each other on these outer reaches um, those are some fairly rough and ready ratios and I think here come literally the last few intersections those are the last three and after this the lines carry on outwards without crossing again and the whole area where everything of musical interest takes place is now shrinking rapidly 
and it looks like it's going to go on like this forever. But in fact, we do reach a kind of boundary here, which is this big triangle. And what this signifies, I'll just go one step more. At, at this triangle, the prime intervals are literally tuned down to unison. Um, on this edge, the second harmonic is tuned down to unison with the fundamental. Uh, on this edge, the third harmonic is, and on this edge, the fifth harmonic is. So those are quite in, insane degrees of mistuning, but it's interesting from a mathematical point of view to see where these lines end up on the edge. Um, just to say, beyond that, out beyond this triangle, you're dealing with negative intervals which don't really correspond to tunings at all. So these um, temperaments, they, they kind of tend to meet the edge in nice there's a nice low ratio, 0 to 1, and that's um, that's dicot. So some interesting ones are these. Um, there's augmented, which actually goes slap through that corner. And down here, there is also bug goes through that corner. And over here, um, there's Compton, and there's another one actually, which is um, Blackwood. And they both go through that corner. And um, if you remember, Compton was uh, the one which didn't have its top tuning in the usual place. And that's because it's one of these so-called extrinsic temperaments. And it's nice to have a kind of geometrical image of what the extrinsic temperaments are. OK, in the next video, we'll be looking at the third dimension of this diagram and the whole thing of stretched and compressed intervals including stretched and compressed octaves, which are central to Paul Ehrlich's idea of top tuning.